never make passing out advice. That's right, Frank. That's right. Look, no hard feelings, huh? I, I, you got a lousy job, but... Well, you only make it rougher on yourself by believing all that stuff. I told you to get that hamburger. So I forgot. Forgot? Sure, with all the big important things you got on your mind, it's pretty difficult to remember a pound of hamburger. What did Shaw have to say? I uh, wanted to remind me I could come president. Look, you better start exercising some manners around here. Manners? Manners in a pigsty? Look at this place. Well, look at this. What am I supposed to do? Behave like royalty or something? What am I, a prince? You're my son. All right, all right, I'll behave like your son. I'm a slob. I'm the son of a slob. You think this place impressed Shaw? Just look around. Look at yourself. Maybe we did let things slide a little bit after your mother died. I... It was no different when she was here. Maybe a few more beer cans, but that's all. Frankie, don't you talk about your mother that way. Then stop using her as a crutch. We're bums, Pa. Just bums. That's the way it is. <laughs> that's just the way it is. Mama, be reasonable. Ellie, I am being reasonable. Frank Rabella is just... Well, you can't be serious about a boy of that type. What type? He's a cheap little hoodlum. How can you say that? You don't even know him. Oh, I've heard enough from the PTA mothers about Frank Rabello. PTA mothers? Don't you see, dear? He's... He's lower strata. Lower strata? It's time you faced a few of the facts of life, my girl. Mother, I know the facts of life. Not those facts. I'm talking about the... well, the... the social structure. You're a very pretty girl, Ellie. What's that got to do with social structure? Oh, Ellie, Ellie. What I mean is, there are nice boys in the school. Boys of good family who will make something of themselves. Their fathers are businessmen. They have a chance. Why don't you go out with one of them? Because I don't like one of them. 
How do you know what you like? Do you want to be a drudge your whole life? Frank Rabello isn't going to be anything, Ellie. That's what I mean by starter. He's always going to be on the bottom rung. And what rung are we on that makes us so important? I don't notice any fur coats or Cadillacs around here. Your father works very hard, Ellie. I'm not saying he doesn't. Money isn't everything. Look, you were the one who started talking about social structure, not me. But it is something. What something? Money. That's what, money. You have to look ahead, dear. You should be interested in young men who can support you decently. Look, Mama, I'm not looking for someone to support me. You have us married already. I'm just going with Frankie. That's the whole point. You shouldn't be going with him. He's nothing. Oh, I've seen him. The dirty jeans and sloppy jacket. I've seen him. Oh, if he were anything at all that would give me some indication that he was suitable for you, I wouldn't mind so much. But he's not. And I do mind. What you're saying is if Frankie had money, it would make a difference. If Frankie were rich, you wouldn't care if he wore a gunny sack. We need bread, Ellie. I'll get it. And hurry back. Yes, Mama. You know how angry your father gets if he has to wait dinner. I will. We got the money. It's all there. Frankie, how are we gonna get it back? Hey, banks are insured against theft. So nobody loses, really. We didn't steal it. We're not criminals. Frankie, it's not our money. We're gonna keep it, Ellie. We're not gonna be bums anymore. I mean, I'm not. Yeah. I guess it does make a difference in the social structure. We're gonna be somebody. We're gonna be people, real people. I got a million plans. Frankie, I can't listen to you now. Mom's running the clock on me. Can you meet me tomorrow at the canal at two? together. I always said I liked you. Sure. Well, that's about all there was to say, because well, when you're kids, you don't know what's going to happen, so you just say things halfway. But the money makes a difference, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I guess it does. Frankie, I love you. I guess I can say it now, because, well, there is a future. I love you, too, Ellie. It doesn't sound funny, does it? No. Being in love with someone and being able to tell them, it's worth all the money in the world. Hey, you think I could kiss you right here in the broad daylight? 
only in a brotherly way. Is that brotherly enough for you? That was a kiss even my mother would approve of. You know, I sure wish I could get your mother to, to like me. Frankie, don't get me wrong. I mean, it really doesn't matter to me, but, well, you might start by, well, getting some new clothes, a different jacket, maybe. Well, if you did something, if you got a job, you're not mad, are you? Heck no, I think it's a great idea. <laughs> hey, look, Kelly, no cop. The place was crawling with them yesterday. I told you we didn't have anything to worry about. The heat's off. Get away from that Coke machine, Frank. I'm watching you. Hey, Mr. Johnson, you got me wrong. The only thing I haven't got you is red-handed. Look, I'm here on business. I, I'd like to get a job. A job? Well, if I hired you, I wouldn't have anything left but a vacant lot. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Johnson. I'd work real hard. I know all about automobiles. Tire change, wheel pack, grease jobs and all that. And how to file the numbers off engine blocks. I'm serious, Mr. Johnson. What would I get for my money? You wouldn't have to worry about your Coke machine anymore. Oh, great. And I'd work real hard. And you know, the guys I go around with, well, I promise you they won't bother your place anymore. What are you trying to run, a protection racket? Hey, I didn't mean it that way. Look, Mr. Johnson, I really want a job. Give me a try, will you? Now, listen. First time a crescent wrench is missing, out you go, understand? Hey, you mean it? We can start Monday after school. Gee, that's great. Thanks a lot, Mr. Johnson. Thanks a lot. Well, can't beat them, join them. Sorry, mister. Give you a little hand here, huh? Oh, thanks. <laughs> hey, uh, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, you look like you just about finished for the day. I thought maybe you might enjoy having a cup of coffee with me or something. No, no thanks. Ah, uh, I'm in the insurance business. You know, small policies, you know, health and accident. I do very well around here with health and accident. Uh, well, I got plenty of insurance, mister. Yeah, uh, well, I'm not trying to sell you. I'm uh, just kind of trying to scare up a few new leads. You know, move-ins, change of address cards. I find it better to hit people for insurance when they first move in. So you fellas haven't found that money yet, huh? <laughs> what? Gotcha, did I? <laughs> oh, now, just a minute. I bet you thought I was just a dumb letter carrier. Let me tell you, I keep my eyes open. I can tell a flat foot. I got flat feet myself. <laughs> <laughs> Besides, they told us down at the station to be on the lookout for new move-ins. <laughs> well, I guess you've got me. <laughs> <laughs> Say... Landlady over at uh, 25 East 43rd Avenue says a young fella moved in. Name's uh, Farrow. 25 East 43rd Avenue. Ah. Farrow. Thanks a lot. Yeah, Mr. Farrow? Yeah, that's right. Uh, I'm from the Casual Insurance Company. I've been sent here to uh, review your life insurance policy. I don't have any life insurance. No life insurance? <laughs> Why, I uh, got it right here. Oh, oh, excuse me. I've got it right here in my little book. Here. That is your name, isn't it, Mr. Farrell? How'd you get that? 
Why, you call our office. Wanted to go over your life insurance policy with one of our representatives. Look, I just got here. I didn't call anyone. Well, that can't be. <laughs> no, my company has a policy on you. Here, right there it is. Mr. Farrow, 25 East 43rd Street. It's right here in my book. <laughs> you got it wrong. Oh, that, I'm sorry, but uh, we do have a policy on you. Well, look, it must be another Farrow. Said he moved out and I moved in. You see, I just came in from Ohio. I'm going to work at Duncan Aircraft. You got the wrong guy. Well, that does explain it, doesn't it? Peculiar coincidence. Very peculiar. Wouldn't probably happen again once in a million times. Okay. And the little game's over. I'd like to get some rest, huh? Uh, you mentioned, Mr. Farrow, that you didn't have a life insurance policy. Uh, why don't we, uh, why don't we make an appointment for next week sometime? What do you say, uh, I really am tired. Well, that sounds fine. Uh, what day would be convenient? About, uh, next Saturday, around four. Next Saturday, around four. Yes, I, uh, I think that'll be fine. Let me just mark that down here. Next Saturday at 4 p.m. I'll, uh, I'll be here, Mr. Farrell. Say, uh, it's a nice view. Yeah. Fine. I, uh, sure hope you enjoy our little community. Just fine. To you. Well, I just got some new clothes. Yeah, hard to recognize you. What happened to the place? Oh, I just thought I'd clean her up a little bit. Well, I guess I'll go put this junk away. friends and influence people. Young man's guide to good behavior. Kid's got a girl. Ellie, I got a surprise for you. Your grade on that history exam was surprise enough for one day. I said I had a surprise for you. Oh, Frankie, not this. Got a car for the money. Ah, but the color doesn't suit your eyes, Ellie. What you need is something dark and functional. What's a car anyway? Just transportation. After that, just window dressing, right? Right. Well, transportation. Oh, Frankie, it's beautiful. Come on, give me your books. I'll drive you home. Oh, Frankie, is this really yours? No, honey, it's ours. Come on, get in, get in. Oh, Frankie, you spent some of the money. No, I didn't. I got a job. A job? Down at Dave's garage. He even gave me two months advance on wages. A job? Oh, Frankie, that's marvelous. <laughs> Functional is the word. back there on the bridge. I've seen him around a lot. He's got to be a cop. But you said they were all gone. Listen, Ellie, I know how we could throw him off if we let him find the briefcase. Oh, I knew you'd give it back. No, not, not the money, just the briefcase. If they find that, they might figure the driver came back and 
Well, he took the money. I'll do it tonight. No one will see me. Don't worry. Alex? Coming, Mom. Hi, Frank. Good afternoon, Mrs. Turner. I, I hope you weren't worried about Ellie. Oh, no, not really. Won't you come in? Thanks anyway, Mrs. Turner, but I gotta get going. See you later, Ellie. Bye, Frank. Bye, Mrs. Turner. Bye, Frank. Where did Frank get the car, Ellie? Huh? I said, where did he get the car? Oh, it's his. <laughs> and I hear he's working. I think that's just wonderful. I never thought he had it in him. <laughs> never thought he had that much gumption. You know, Ellie, he may straighten out just fine. He may. What is it? I thought I saw something moving out there. 